Hi, my name is Mike Puicheroyan. I'm going to show you our deep learning model to integrate flow cytometry data. It can combine different panel types, extrapolate partial labeling, and correct for batch effects at the same time. Briefly, flow cytometry is a technique that allows you to measure, for example, blood sample composition at a single cell level. It's based on adding fluorescent reagents to your sample, which are markers for particular proteins of interest. The cells are channeled through the cytometer, which exposes them to lasers at different frequencies. The markers have different absorption and emission spectra. Then you can use those readings to differentiate between different cell types. However, if we're trying to integrate samples coming from different sources, different experimental runs, there can be significant batch effects which make it difficult to compare these readouts across batches. Another difficulty if you're trying to collect data over a long period of time is that the markers can change, they can run out, which gives you incompatible data types. There is also a limited number of markers that a cytometer can use in a single run before they start interfering with one another. To address these problems, we developed a framework based on variational autoencoders, which are probabilistic models parameterized by neural networks. You can specify a probabilistic prior on the latent space, in this case a multivariate Gaussian. This forces the model to consider the space in between your training samples. This means that if you introduce some offsets in the latent space to correct for batch effects, you are more likely to get realistically looking samples. So let's start with the biggest panel, make an autoencoder, project to latent space Z, and train to minimize reconstruction error. In parallel, we'll do the same for all the data types that we want to integrate, making sure that the latent dimensionality is the same. This doesn't give us an integrated space just yet, only multiple spaces that have the same dimensionality. To pull them together, we use the fact that these panels share a lot of their markers. So let's make another autoencoder that uses only the shared markers and is compatible with all the samples. And then for each cell, we explicitly minimize the distance between its shared embedding and its own panel-specific embedding. To correct for batch effects, we also normalize each batch in the latent space to mean zero. And we use these normalized embeddings for all downstream tasks, including the merging. However, there is a problem when doing naive batch normalization. If we calculate some statistics like mean or standard deviation for a channel in a batch, it will be affected by the underlying proportions of classes. This can be visualized on a toy data where we take some population that consists of many subtypes and look at a histogram of one of the channels. We know what the subpopulations are, so if we split this data into 10 batches, making sure that each batch has a slightly different proportion of cell types, and then normalize the batches, we get very clear batch effects for markers that are more present in some imbalanced populations. So what can we do about it? We use a resampling scheme. Starting with our data X, we want to standardize it to mean 0 and standard deviation 1. To do so, we need a subset of the data to calculate these statistics. If the data is unlabeled, we can start by using all of it and getting some normalized output. Use it to train the autoencoders. We also want to normalize in the latent space, so let's use the same set of controls to figure out the offsets. From that we can do semi-supervised classification if we have some of the data labeled. If not, then we fit a Gaussian mixture clustering to the latent space with diagonal covariance and use it as pseudo-labeling for the next iteration. We can then balance our control sets to make sure that each batch has the same proportion of cell types in its control. We standardize the data in between iterations but update the latent offsets every epoch. If we try it out on the toy data, just normalizing those imbalanced batches, we can recover most of the error using a classifier and get close to the same performance when using clustering if we didn't have labels. We can also do a more difficult test by splitting the batches into five panels, two batches each, and remove a whole channel from each panel. Then the model can be used to impute the missing markers. Similarly, in this case, if we use the right number of clusters and normalize with resampling, then we can get performance close to training with known labels. And the latent space embeddings can be fairly high dimensional, 30-50 dimensions, so for visualization we make a U-map of the latent space. This is what we call the lineage panel, which has markers that make it easy to separate cell types, and the batch mixing is shown on the right. What we have to consider is that each cell can have more than one embedding. Usually it will have two, one from the shared encoder and one from its own panel-specific encoder. To get a single result, we linearly merge those embeddings with proportions randomly sampled for each cell from a uniform distribution. If there are more than two embeddings for a cell, the proportions come from uniform sampling from a simplex.
As a result, we get a single UMAP to visualize data coming from all the autoencoders. We can now use this joint embedding to get a representation at the level of samples. Each blood sample was drawn from a patient on a given day and contains a set of cells. So we filter out the cells that we want, normalize them, and average in the latent space to get a single vector. This representation gives us an average composition of the latent factors, which were disentangled by the VAE, and we make a separate UMAP of those. The chemokine panel has fewer markers that allow you to separate cell types, but more markers that tell you about cell activity. We have a few populations of interest labeled, but we do unsupervised balancing with the GM. After a few iterations, we filter out neutrophils and monocytes and make separate models at the cell level. Then we can do clustering to count the subpopulations, and we can also get a continuous representation without clustering.